Now, this is Philippine economic problems of the first uh, of the 21st century. This is, these are actual problems that uh, the Philippines is actually experiencing. And what are the the processes or the strategies used by the country, the leadership and the administration of this uh, country under uh, President Rodrigo Duterte and uh, and previous uh, presidencies and previous administrations, but more speci more specifically on uh, this uh, current uh, administration, and uh, we will try to look at and try to evaluate whether or not we're doing our job in addressing basic economic problems that our country actually faces now we begin with the field of agriculture now by the way if you are uh, watching in this particular video and you can scan or the QR code that is displayed in your screen um, uh, you will be redirected to a website wherein we actually uh, took the data that is displayed in your screen um, in this particular video. You can just scan on that QR code and then you will be redirected to that website for more details. So you can immediately do it and uh, you will be redirected to that specific website. Now, in the meantime, while you're watching this, uh, just uh, listen to the details of the discussion so that uh, you will gain further insights on this particular part of the subject. Now, we begin with agriculture. Now, there are 17 sustainable development goals. And agriculture actually hits at least three of uh, them. No poverty, zero hunger, decent work, and economic growth. There is a gap in the sector of agriculture because 20 percent of the total workforce were employed in the agriculture sector but the sector contributed less than 10 percent of the gross domestic product in 2017 meaning that we have a heavily underdeveloped agriculture sector we don't have enough machineries we don't i am a i am a farmer I have a farm in in the, the mountainous part of Cebu City and that is the primary problem we don't have support from the government with respect to machineries and farm inputs the Philippines crop production index steadily declined from 119 in 2012 to 110 in the 2007 impacting the country's food security we have a problem here in a country because more and more rice fields are transformed into industrial plants or airports and other you know buildings which supposedly it would produce food now no longer because it is uh, transformed into something that we cannot eat buildings all right now what are the government initiatives the Philippine Development Plan, or PDP, seeks to substantially increase the gross value add of agriculture, fisheries, and forestry from baseline value of 1% to 2.5% to 3.5% between 2017 and 2022. The strategies supporting this target include improving agricultural productivity and capacity of agricultural enterprises which means that the government is now supporting the agriculture sector by providing more product i mean farm inputs more uh, assistance on small time farmers and more encouragement for young minds young people to in to enter into the agriculture sector in order to induce an increase in productivity among agricultural enterprises then we have climate now climate hits at least 
uh, three goals in the Sustainable Development Goals, SDG, and that is Climate Action, number 13. Number 14, Life Below Water, talks about pollution, and life on land, the natural habitat of birds, animals, insects, and human beings. The 2018 World Risk Index ranked the Philippines as the third most vulnerable country in the world with higher risk of tropical cyclone. As uh, uh, according to meteorologists, we are the, high po uh, the, the typhoon highway in the world because we actually receive or experience around 20 typhoons per year. Imagine that. We are the only country in the world who actually have to experience that particular uh, environmental risk. Climate change will cause crop yields to, to decrease by 25% according to Food and Agriculture Organization. Now, what are the government initiatives? The National Climate Change Action Plan, uh, 2011 to 2028, this is still from the time of President Noy Noy Aquino, outlines seven key priorities. One, food security. Two, water sufficiency. Three, environmental and ecological stability. Four, human security. Five, climate uh, friendly industries and services, sustainable energy and knowledge, and capacity development. These are the seven key priorities. The Philippines has committed to reducing carbon emission by 70% in 2030. This means that the government is doing its part in making sure that uh, we will be able to preserve the natural habitat the natural resources and the environment in general although this is some kind of a challenge because uh, we do not know yet whether or not we would be successful in doing this but at least the government have uh, the perspective of making a better philippines then we have energy affordable and clean energy Almost 10% of uh, the Philippines population does not have access to electricity. That is actually true, especially in rural uh, areas. In some other parts of uh, the provinces, there are, uh, there are people who actually don't have uh, access to electricity. The country has the second highest electricity cost in Southeast Asia. The total energy consumption, consumption is projected to increase at an average rate of 4% annually, which means that our electricity is very expensive. In Cebu City, we are probably around 14 pesos per uh, kilowatt hour. And in the province, probably around 8 eight to nine pesos per kilowatt hour now the philippine energy plan 2017 to 2040 aims to ensure 100 percent access to energy increase renewable energy capacity to at least 20 000 megawatt establish an investment driven national natural gas industry and promote energy efficiency this is the plan of the government and they are uh, actually doing it they are promoting uh, the establishment of uh, solar power plants. Uh, one of the best example is um, the solar power plants that is uh, situated in uh, Barangay Talavera in Toledo City. Right? There is a huge uh, power plant in, in Toledo City. Right? So that is uh, a testament to how the government is doing 
its job in making sure that uh, the Philippines will be will uh, be better in the in the near future. Then we have health. One in three children under five years of age are malnourished. The prevalence of uh, stunting increased to 33% in 2017 from 30 in 2013, which means that uh, uh, mas daghan karon na mga bata nga putot wa katubo tungod sa malnutrition or uh, kanang gitawag na to o guamba kuwang sa kaon, kuwang sa vitamins and minerals ang gikaon. Probably, wagi makaon, sahay. No? The Philippines has high rates of maternal and infant mortality, especially in rural areas. Daghang ka iyong mga inahan o mga anak na nangamatay tungod sa uh, pagpanganak o giving birth. So, what are the uh, underlying uh, problem? Why is these particular things happening? First, we don't have enough uh, facilities that will cater these uh, health problems or health needs. Well, Atana, in fact, uh, during the time of the pandemic, uh, we are caught off guard on what to do in order to address the problem of uh, COVID-19. However, in the Philippine Health Agenda of uh, 2016 to 2022, which aims to combat communicable and non-communicable disease, malnutrition, and industrialization-related uh, uh, disease, the government is also committed in improving healthcare services delivery and reducing inequality in access to healthcare. In fact, oga wa palang ito kawata ang pill health, no? 15 billion at ikwaho lang na kanini ang at na, na requisite no but i don't think so no akita do nam sa take tungod ng mga tana but uh the field health is actually doing its job in making sure that the poorest of the poor will no longer be required to pay even 1 peso in government hospitals or what we call as the no balance billing no so if you go to government hospitals and you have uh, pill health uh, insurance from the government, uh, probably by indigency or your uh, premium uh, pill health insurance, if you go to government hospitals, you will absolutely uh, receive uh, absolutely pay zero peso. No? So that is. Uh, a way by which uh, the government is doing its job in making sure that uh, we will be able to improve our good health and well-being. Then we have MSMEs or uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises, which uh, actually hits at least two SDGs, decent work and economic growth, and sustainable cities and communities. MSMEs account for 99.6% of all enterprises, but only 25% of countries' exports. MSMEs' financing gap is estimated to be about uh, 2 billion US dollar, meaning that uh, the government had to invest at least 2 billion dollars or around uh, 100 billion pesos in order to fund the micro, small, and medium enterprises, in order to enable the grassroots, right? This is already monetary policy, uh -huh. uh, as uh, been discussed in the previous discussions we had. Now, this is a very important thing because the, the moment the government will enable those that are at the bottom, it would, uh, it would uh, collectively carry the entire country towards prosperity. And so if we don't do that, well, we will continue to spiral down into, into disaster. Uh, Magna Carta, the, this is the, the government initiative. Uh, 
by passing the Magna Carta for MSMEs, which mandate banks to allocate 8% of their loan portfolio to micro and small enterprises and 2% to medium-sized enterprises. That banks should not only loan the, the, for their uh, money to huge uh, enterprises, but uh, at least allocate 8% of their loan loan portfolio to micro and small enterprises and 2% to medium, which means that the smaller businesses will now be able to access to banks uh, in order to enable themselves to invest further more. Then we have poverty alleviation, that is the first uh, SDG, no poverty. The country's poverty headcount ratio declined only slightly for 27% uh, in uh, 2006 to 22% in 2016. Meaning that uh, there are around, at this particular moment, no? around uh, 20 million, uh, around 20 million Filipinos are considered poor. And probably... Uh, they will not be able to uh, carry themselves out of that poverty without government intervention because the government have a role in making sure that there is equity in the distribution of wealth. And so that's the reason why in the Philippine Development Plan uh, 2017 to 2022, it aims to reduce the national poverty headcount ratio to 13 to 15 percent by 2022 which is i think uh, too idealistic considering that we actually suffered the backlash or the uh, sort of uh, disaster in 2020 by the entry the entry of uh, covid 19. the key policy measure includes creating more and more better jobs improving improving uh, productivity, equipping the workforce with 21st century skills, and investment in health and nutrition. Of course, uh, the government is doing its job. In fact, uh, even it's a pandemic, we have distributed uh, a social amelioration program to those of the poorest of the poor. And uh, we also have uh, some of uh, what we call as a financial aids to senior citizens and some other um, ways by which the government actually is helping the poorest of the poor. And um, also together with that is the Build, Build, Build program, although many of uh, the people in our country actually disagree with how Build, Build, Build actually works. But um, it undeniably, undeniably provided an economic boost in our country by... Uh, by increasing the number of uh, employed workers in our uh, country and you know more employed workforce which me means that, that there is more of uh, our country's population who have the capacity to spend money and when there is more people who are capacitated to spend money there is more economic activity and then it will create a domino effect of uh, making sure that the country will be more and more stable. Then we have uh, water and sanitation. Uh, clean water and sanitation, about 9% of the population does not have access to clean water. and 18% lacks access of improved sanitation. So, din his Pilipinas, taghang kay mga tao ay mainom tubig. Nagsalig sa tabay. No? Nagsalig sa kanang mga tabay. Well, no? Onya, we do not know how safe is that because no one from the health department actually test the source of water which at some point causing several, pan, uh, I mean, outbreaks of, uh, of diseases. 
And there are also, at some point, uh, problem with a uh, improved sanitations. Like, at some other point, we don't have the proper toiletry. No? Mga, mga kasilyas, no? ubeta, huwang ang Pilipinas. Especially in the rural areas or some, in some part of the urban areas, don't actually have uh, comfort rooms. They'll just, you know, throw it away in the river. Or probably in the Juan, in the rural areas, oh, adto rin sa puruan sa bayabas niya. Ma, oh, mang, mang ilog hagunoy, no? O pagkaha sa kato mga pobre makarilit, no? Sama na mo sa una, mang ilog agungal, no? So, that's the reality in the Philippines. It, it might, you know, make us laugh or probably oh, at some point, uh, no katawan nang kay maminaw tong mga experiences but that's the reality the there is a problem in the philippines as to access with clean water and sanitation and then that particular uh unsanitary huan uh, activity sa atong mga kaigsoonan will also in turn result into something that is uh, terribly dangerous to us because let's say for example Gihimo din tong kuan. Uh, kanini ang disposanan sa hugaw ang ang usaka area niya ang ubos at tutuay tabay at torsad magkuha og para imnon, no? Which in effect actually uh, increases the tendency of uh, disease outbreaks, no? Uh, the Philippines aims to achieve universal equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water and adequate sanitation by all or for all by 2030. This is also focusing on improving water quality. Of course, uh, the government is uh, very, at some point, uh, uh, cautious regarding this because uh, this could turn out to be problematic in terms of health and and uh, well-being of our uh, fellow Filipinos. So, we actually have a lot of regulations in making sure that uh, everyone will be able to drink uh, clean water.